So today we got to talk about the cancellation of number three, Ohio State versus Maryland. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner shit. <laughs> What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about Ohio State at Maryland being canceled and get into the ramifications of that. Also want to let you know, the RJ Young Show podcast is wherever you get your podcast. We live stream on Mondays and Wednesdays at 3 p.m. If you don't catch the live stream, you can catch the podcast. Also, check out FoxSports.com where I wrote a piece about USC and Clay Helton and over on CFB on Fox made a video about could USC actually make the playoff and what would have to happen for that to take place. And we're looking at those sorts of things right now, right, as Ohio State and Maryland is off. Maryland Athletic Director Damon Evans confirmed the news in a release that was broken earlier in the day saying there is nothing more important than the health and well-being of our student athletes, coaches, and staff. We realize that this news is disappointing to all of the Maryland fans out there who were looking forward to the Terps taking on an outstanding Ohio State team. But the responsible thing for us to do is to pause football activities given the number of positive cases currently in our program. I was also looking forward to this game because Maryland felt like they had finally figured out who they are after getting destroyed to open the season by Northwestern coming back and to Tallulah, Tonga Valoa, throwing for over 400 yards against Minnesota in a dramatic win. Saw Jake Funk coming on. Saw a little bit of Isaiah Jacobs as well. Rakeem Jarrett is coming on. And so forth and so on. And yet, it felt like this could have been a trap game for Ohio State. Love to see Ohio State get tested before their inevitable march to the Big Ten Championship and likely the college football playoff. Thought this game might have had the best opportunity this side of Indiana to do that, as Michigan looks like it's just on fire. But also in here, we're seeing a spate of games that have been canceled. LSU, Alabama is off, right? We've seen Texas A&M's game get canceled with, I believe it's Tennessee, but Check me on that in the comments. Point is, there have been so many SEC games and other games that have been canceled this weekend that it's not funny anymore. And seemingly like following Halloween, not the cold weather, but Halloween, and dudes going to parties, on Halloween, we have a bunch of kids that are testing positive. Like, according to the release, eight Maryland players tested positive last week. That's a major spike for them, as they had had just 10 test positive since September 30th, up until last week, that includes 1,510 on-campus PCR screening tests. In all, Maryland has administered 5,333 tests to student-athletes and has turned in 120 positives. Again, along with the biggest game of the weekend, I thought per perhaps Alabama or LSU being canceled, we're only looking forward to the Masters now as Iowa, uh, Iowa as Boston College and Notre Dame probably take center stage in the middle of the afternoon. We're still waiting on Arkansas, Florida. Is Sam Pittman tested positive. He's in quarantine. He's depressed. He's not going to be able to coach that game. But that's another game that we don't expect Arkansas to win that game, but it'd be fun if they made it competitive. And I think Arkansas, Maryland, basically on the same rung right now, right? They're just two programs that are figuring it out. Mike Lossley's in year two with a new starting quarterback that could be great next year to his little brother, Rakeem Jarrett, five-star recruit that he stole away from LSU. There were reasons to be optimistic about Maryland, especially as they beat Penn State, a Penn State that dropped 59 on the skull and gave up zilch last year, in a year where Penn State is not very good. Also, 0-3. Like, Penn State and Michigan, both awful. Like, Michigan won their opener against Minnesota, but that turns out to not be that big a deal as Minnesota, number one, loses to Maryland. Number two, they're also looking at having to lose games because they've had guys that have tested positive. We'll see how their season ends up going. All while Northwestern and Purdue are sitting atop the Big 12 or Big 12, the Big 10 North. So I I feel for Ohio State fans as much as I feel for Maryland fans on this, but if you're going to lose a game, you want to lose a game in the regular season, because the Big 10 did not schedule any dates for makeup games, this game is not going to be made up, right? It's just canceled period. But did we really expect them to make it through the entire season without having half a dozen cancellations? No. 
if Wisconsin gets to play Michigan this weekend, I think that's going to be a big deal. I think that's going to be great for both fan bases, even as, you know, Coach Khakis is looking at the hot seat, though nobody expects him to beat Wisconsin. I don't think that many people expected Michigan to beat Wisconsin, even if they were good, because Wisconsin is just great and has been for some time. It's about, can you actually demonstrate that your secondary is going to be competent against a Graham Mertz who was carving up the only opponent that he faced to start the season, but also against, you know, a wide receiver core that those Michigan corners ought to be able to keep in check. I find that to be a really compelling discussion. Also, it ain't like we got a whole hell of a lot of choices. Like those of y'all that were scoffing at Mac football last night, not wanting to watch Akron go to work, not wanting to watch Buffalo go to work, probably feel some kind of way about missing those games now if you're just a college football fan and a college football junkie, as I am. I'm also want, I wanted to see Justin Fields pad his stats for the Heisman vote as much as anything as well, because that was the one thing that I thought he might be able to do that Trevor Lawrence wasn't able to do, which is just play more games, but perhaps not as Lawrence missed two games, probably going to play in at least eight, if not nine, right? And on she goes with Clemson. Mac Jones, also, this is the first game that he lost with LSU, right? Mostly been able to just torch everybody that he's played, put up these Joe Burrow numbers, these Tua Tonga-Valoa numbers, and ride this Alabama offense into what we expect to be an SEC West division title and eventual SEC championship game against the Florida team that looks really good. The thing that is interesting now is the conversation around pushing the college football playoff back. There's a number of people that want to see that done, thinking that it'll give teams more opportunities to get healthy to play or expanding the college football playoff to include more teams. But Greg Sankey brings up a very good point. Expanding the college football playoff makes it more difficult to play the playoff. Counter argument to that is not if you bubble the teams through the month of December with nobody on campus. Maybe, maybe not. I see both sides of that argument. I also don't think that the college football playoff wants to expand at all. I also think that ESPN might be interested in it because they've lost so much inventory as it relates to college football games this year to let alone the inventory they lost during the lockdown that didn't seem to matter all that much now that we're in November and we're seeing more COVID-19 cases spike than we've seen at all this year. A lot of moving pieces to this one, but if you're Ohio State, keep the kids safe. Maryland, keep the kids safe first and foremost. Now, put them in bubble wrap and lock them down because you don't want to lose any more games as Ohio State plays, well, the second best team in the Big Ten, sainted Indiana, next week. And I think we're all going to be looking forward to that. All right, that is it for me. Deuces.